Hi there. Welcome to On the Flip Side, a podcast for anyone who wants to live their best sales life. We're going to be talking to buyers, sales managers, SDRs and AEs about things like what does it take to be a great sales manager or how can you go home happy month after month. So let's dive right in. Side live. I'm honestly so excited and a tiny bit nervous to be hosting today's podcast recording live today. We've hosted over 30 episodes of On the Flip Side, had some amazing guests, and today we decided to take this live. And even more than that, I'm super excited um, about the topic for today, and of course, our guest for today. The topic itself is a bit of a tongue twister. Should sales shut shop in the last two weeks of December? And that's exactly what I asked our VP of Sales at Wingman, and we decided to make it a conversation for everyone to join in. Pradeep, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here today. Hey, thank you, Kushal. It's great to be here uh, as well, right? And it's a, more than a tongue twister. It's a very kind of like controversial topic as well. <laughs> I could see the world getting divided, right? Into like, but not exactly divided, like I see in other controversial posts. Or posts. Here it's like a different kind of divided. We'll get to that soon, but very happy to be here and, and nice to meet all of you. <clears throat> Great for those folks who don't know, of course, Pradeep is our VP of Sales here, and he's also a very well-regarded and well-loved sales leader, both in India and, of course, globally. Pradeep, first off, to sort of tease this section, will you be going on leave, say, in the next two weeks or so? In normal cases, I wouldn't, right? But I have just become a father, right? So I'm going on a paternity leave uh, the last week, right? Uh, but if that's not been the case, right? Then no, I wouldn't have been. Uh, congratulations on your good news, of course, uh, Pradeep. The addition of a little baby boy to your family. So, Pradeep, to get right into this, right? We, of course, ran an interesting poll on your LinkedIn today about, you know, the same topic: should folks really kind of shut shop, go home, and just come back maybe refreshed in January? Like, like there were a few suggestions around that. So, tell us, what are the people saying? Is it time to go back home and come back? Very interesting result to the poll, right? Um, like from the start of the poll till the end right so i could see from 4 people to 400 people it's not a huge amount but still it's not a lesser amount as well right but given the fact that we ran the poll only for like say 7 hours or so the results are pretty interesting because like constantly 70% number was not broken right from the start of the finish right so that's 70% of the people are for shutting the sales function for the next uh, 10 days or so and generally like with such uh, uh, kind of like polls i see people getting exactly divided right so uh, like 51% for and for, like 49% ish against something like that right? but here like 70% is a, like a really good number to be at like it's clearly it's the north star uh, metric so i was looking at the 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 persona as well uh, a little bit deeper and there i found an interesting insight right so among the 70% who voted like hey yes let's shut down the sales team right like we had a mix like we had a mix of sales leaders we had a mix of like reps individual reps as well right uh, and then some middle managers as well right but 50% right of this 70% are sales leaders hmm. and one other interesting fact is among the rest 30% right 90% are still sales leaders which means that the sales leaders are now divided they are like 40% of the sales leaders are like yes let's shut it down and 40% of the sales leaders are like no no let's keep it running right yeah uh, i was going to ask you if it's you know great news for all of the sales teams and sales reps right like if the leaders feel it's time to shut shop great let's just go home <laughs> <laughs> exactly right so that was a very interesting fact right and that is a very interesting insight as well right as to hey why do leaders think this way and that's a important question to ask as well we can't straight away neglect saying that yes sales should function all the time because customers will be there all the time and and neglect the importance of the the personal space that people get as well in sales right so i think that is one of the reasons why the sales leadership is divided on this fact as well because generally this season is seen as slow and and sales leaders like tend to think that okay now is when i should really like put my team to ease 
Got it. Pradeep, I know we have some more hard hitting questions around what people should really be doing. You know, if they feel this is downtime for their teams, then what should they be doing? But before we go to that, I think Jen Ferguson commented, I think on your LinkedIn post around, you know what, it's okay to give your people some time off. It's also a time of relaxation and rest and celebration for a lot of folks. So it's okay to kind of say, you know what, it's time for me to just go home, you know, and relax for a while. So is this maybe a time for sales leaders to also be showing a little more empathy possibly towards their sales teams and what their, you know, different folks on the team might want? Great question. First of all, thank you, Jen. If you're watching, that was a great comment, right? And I, and I know how much hard work you're putting into the ecosystem to make sure that leadership is being more empathetic towards the team members as well, right? So thank you for that. And yeah, to answer that question, right? I think Jen's comment was more around analyze your business first, right? That is what I would uh, recommend as well, right? Where look at your business trajectory because I've seen businesses where they like kill it in December. Like suddenly the graph will shoot up heavily in December, right? And that is because their business is more around getting the leftover budgets that companies have at the end of the year, right? And, and at the end of the year, like some teams like revenue operations or DevOps, like they are much more like, what do you call? They have time to investigate into deeper uh, technical tools or technical infrastructure, right? That they can go ahead and implement. Uh, so, and that leads to a ripple effect of having a huge demand and that spikes up the sales as well. So her comment, the, the best thing that I liked about that was, do you have a demand, right? Do you have a demand spike in December or, or do you have a demand spike in uh, November, just a month before, right? That can lead to a ripple effect, right? So analyze your business first. If your business is not demanding that particular spike, right? or that particular indicator, right? Where your team should be like much more reactive to your customers or prospects, then go ahead, give your team a little bit more relaxing space, right? Give them a time off, right? So that they don't burn out easily. And that is not just so typically the, like since this is a holiday season, we all, we all generally like normalize and tend to think that, okay, we should shut it down, right? And that is the, that is the, thought process that we need to break, right? What we have to do is we have to analyze business by business right? and understand which is a downtime. Like there will be a downtime for every business. Leader. For example, right now with the Omicron, right? Speaking again, there might be a downtime for travel business. Again, right? that might come up or, or companies or technologies that are tried to the travel space, right? Or, or who knows, right? A month later, the, the demand might peak again. So it's good to analyze this trend right, that the business is following, understand what are the few days or weeks of the time, right, where your business can be a little bit more relaxed and give your people, right, a, a time to go ahead and release their like kind of stress because it's a stressful job. Nobody can deny that sales is not stressful. Right? Nobody will say that, right? So you can give the, your people the time as well to go ahead and relax and get their mental space and mental bandwidth as well. Generally, I've seen companies as well tell that, hey, take time off whenever you want. But that whenever you want will never come, right? And when leaders are, are somewhat like telling people that, okay, you can now go ahead and take your time off, it, it look much more as a positive indicator to your teams and business as well that, okay, right now they are caring enough about us as well and, and not just the, uh, the revenue. That sounds like a lot of um, intelligence, all of calibration between what our business demands and then really what our team members need. So I think there's a fair bit of, you know, data crunching, but also then sort of emotion crunching as well to uh, be done there. So they're going a little ahead, right? Given that 70% or so of folks do feel like, you know, maybe business is going to be slow, so it's okay to maybe take some time off. Um, is the best way to take some time off or do you think for folks who are still at work, uh, what's the best way to sort of utilize this time? Got it. Great. So the important slogan that we all should remember is you shouldn't stay at work and take a time off, right? And that generally happens these last two weeks, right? Even when I was an AE, right? Being completely candid, I'm not sure if my ex-boss is here and watching it. But when I was an AE back, back then, like seven uh, to eight years back, I used to like sit at work December, like last two weeks, and I used to chill, I used to enjoy enjoy time, have the great fun of my life. Sometimes it happens, right? Because like earlier I used to get like four or five calls and now, I used to like sit and wait around for calls and maybe I'll get even just two for a week, right? I used to be very happy about that. But the reality is if you're staying at work, the, the, the only thing that you can do to be a lot more productive is prospecting, right? And that is what I would recommend. 
right? Because mostly, like 90% of the cases, if you have not seen the deal before the 20th of December, you will never see the deal come through before the end of the uh, year, right? Because it's extremely hard, right? Because people will go and leave and it's like, you have to like move uh, mountains for your product to be the first priority when somebody is returning from the vacation, right? Because like when somebody is returning from vacation, there's going to be a ton of things on their plate and, and they'll, it, it'll take time to check things off, right? Of the plate. So what you can do at best, I, I also saw one of the comment to my post where I think a sales leader has mentioned that they got like 50 plus demos during this time. Right. And that's basically because their, their ideal persona would have been much more attentive or much more receptive during this particular space. That's why I tell always analyze your persona, always analyze your business person, right? And based on that, you can go ahead and tailor make your prospecting strategy, right? Because now that you have a lot of time, you can go surgical, right? It's all, it's always about like whether you're going ahead for a net fishing or a rod fishing, right? And, and during other times of the business, you can go ahead and do a net fishing, right? But now you have a lot more time bandwidth and mental capacity to do a rod fish. So you can get and land the exact customers who you would like to talk to in the next financial year right now. Right. And that's the best strategy to do. So it sounds like sales team should, sales reps especially should really be using this type to sort of get in touch with their ideal customers, establish that trust, set up all of those steps so that when, you know, as soon as January kicks in, then those folks are, you know, you know, your product, your service is top of the mind. And that's hopefully a priority for um, the other person as well. Exactly. Right? Uh, because like anyway, with Jan, majority of the teams, again, will be a little distracted with sales kickoff, right? And for the viewers, we'll also be doing upcoming sessions on sales kickoffs as well. So feel free to follow this LinkedIn live. And generally with such distraction, Jan also demands a good month, right? Because that sets the precedence for the whole year, right? Not numbers wise or not factually, but more on an emotional side, right? When Jan is great, your business by itself, the people within the business also will tend to think that, okay, now this financial year is going to go great. Let me just put in uh, my best efforts uh, to make it happen, right? And, and that's just sets uh, emotional positivity to your team as well. So uh, since both are striking at the same time, your sales kickoffs and an expectation of a great Jan, right? you need to like really work on your pipeline during the last two weeks of December. So Pradeep, talking of teams and maybe adding a little bit of controversy to this discussion, I'm just going to ask on behalf of, you know, all of the sales reps and the AEs, should sales leaders be giving their teams quota relief over the holidays, especially after the 20th, as you put it? <laughs> I'll add a little bit of diplomacy to the controversy as well, right? Where I'm not going to just rule out by saying it depends upon the business again, right? Because I've told that enough, but I would say it depends on mostly the financial and the culture that you want to build as well, right? Basically the quota relief is an indicator that drives the behavior of a business, right? And it can be taken either ways, right? So if people are giving a quota relief, then right now my 70% becomes a hundred percent, right? And people can either perceive it in two ways. If, if a person has already done 70%, they can perceive it that, okay, I'm now done with my numbers. Let me just close the month or the year out, right? Or people can think like, okay, now 70% is 100%. Now, if I do more, I'll get more accelerators on it, right? So it depends upon the way you want to, like you want your business to think, your reps to think, right? And your overall dynamics to work as well, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. for this to work like effectively, the only two things that you got to analyze is the people right? Who work for your team and also the business dynamics as well, right? So if your business is under a good pressure that you have to like deliver a, a solid result before the end of December, then I wouldn't suggest quota relief. Uh, that's the last thing you want to do. But if the business is already doing really well, right? And uh, you just want to like give more flexibility to your people, then I wouldn't be against it as well, right? It's a great thing to do. Yeah, right. And 50% of the people will always be like, okay, now I'm done with my quota and 50% will be like, okay, now is the time to overachieve. Right. So that mindset will always be there. You just got to mentally prepare for that and then uh, go ahead and do it. Right. But there's no harm in doing it if your business is sound and solid and you're almost at your quarterly numbers. So clearly all sorts will make a sales team, like I said, right. It could be like super ambitious folks. It could also be people who've sort of done some part of their quota and there's still some distance to go. And I guess that's 
it's probably it, it makes sense to kind of take it one team um, at a time and not to use um, a blanket approach necessarily um, across the board. Um, going a little ahead, Pradeep, for those who want to focus on building their pipeline, what are maybe the top ways that you suggest for people to really um, focus their energies on? Got it. Great. So <clears throat> now is the time. Uh, now is the right time to experiment a few new tactics as well, like video prospecting. Right. And, and going heavy on LinkedIn. Like if your persona is available a lot on LinkedIn, for example, in our case, in Wingman, our principal persona will, will be a lot on LinkedIn. Right. And now I've been telling my reps that this is a great time to go heavy on LinkedIn. Right now you can go ahead and do a quick loom video and share it on LinkedIn. Right. Or, or test out the LinkedIn voice feature as well. Right. And these kind of like creative uh, methods could be adopted to go ahead and generate prospecting. Right. Because Obviously, like obviously, when somebody's celebrating a holiday and you're going ahead and calling them in between, right? They'll be like somewhat pissed right? when you, especially when you ask the question, "How are you doing?" Right? Yeah, yeah. The, the last thing that they will expect is like, "Oh, okay, Pradeep is there on the line." I'm very excited to speak to you. Like, really? Like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and instead, like, now is the chance to be like more genuine as well, right? Or, or try different other methods like uh, sending gifts to your prospects, right? Seeing how that's working, right? And and uh, trying out a, a little bit more ABM approach, right? Where where you're tying closely with marketing as well, right? Especially at the end of the year. And, and going surgical on your approach with your prospects, right? And that is some of the tactics that I'll recommend, uh, especially during this particular time of the year, right? Because it's not good to be too aggressive, right? And if you're passive, you will always be left behind. So you got to understand that fine balance and attack on the right channels where your prospects can engage a lot. Pradeep, you spoke of video prospecting, right? And that's one of the trends that we're also seeing across the board. A lot of other sales leaders have also spoken about how folks are increasingly sort of um, responding to video prospecting. It would be great to hear about maybe some of the best examples um, that you've seen or, you know, what your guidelines would really be for someone to do video prospecting well. Got it. See, the why video prospecting will work or why will it fail? I'll just give one example for both, right? So why it will work is, if you're very genuine in the video, right? If you're uh, striking a conversation very casually, right? With genuinity, like you're, you're genuinely trying to help out a person, right? Not, not uh, a fake pitch or a fake talk track or a script that you, you talk about, right? And that will generally not work, right? So why video prospecting is becoming a trend or increasingly like drawing a lot of attention is because like, imagine uh, you start and end your day looking at emails, right? And you suddenly get something different. You will obviously have the curiosity to go and look, watch it. Is. So you're getting open rate easily, right? And that is the first way to go ahead and get a reply, right? And second is the quality of your content, right? And I would say extremely short and extremely genuine, right? Get to the point immediately, right? If, if you say something like, hey, you know what? I, I, I saw that you love football and keep talking about football for the next two or three minutes, right? Obviously, the person is going to figure out right? They'll read between the lines, right? Versus like you can talk about the direct pain that you're solving because people know that you're reaching out to them to do business, right? But what value do you add is the principal thing that you need to focus on and keeping it really short to the point, concise and precise, right? That will get you the final thing, which is the most important thing, the replay rate, right? And like being, if you're again, like going with video is really strong. If your CTA call to action is really soft, like, hey, respond to it, like it, comment it, right? That's soft, right? Then it's not going to work again, right? Instead, you just ask for five minutes uh, or 10 minutes on a call, right? Then it's a hard CTA, but it'll work, right? Because people will appreciate uh, you being upfront and asking for their time as well and telling them how you're going to utilize it. I think it's um, really key that you spoke about making interesting sort of videos, concise um, and precise as well. In fact, one of, I think the best pieces of outreach that I've also received as a marketer came from someone called Mitch Pelroy. Shout out um, to him as well. In video, very interestingly, he um, he had about, I think, two or three dogs in his background. I'm a dog person for those of you who may not know this already. And he had about, you know, two or three dogs in his background, kept it very casual, uh, very honest, as you pointed out, right? There was no pretense. There was no, okay, you know what? Here I am sitting in a suit and a tie in my office. Uh, there was none of that. This was, you know, a couple of months ago. Everyone was working from home, no exceptions. And it was a very honest sort of portrayal of what working from home really meant for a lot of folks. And that video just caught my eye. Because in a sea of even videos, right? Although video in itself is not 
um, entirely overused yet. I think there's a lot of potential if it's done right, as is true with a lot of mediums. But with this one especially, it was a very honest, fresh sort of very real approach. And I think that's really what stood out in that video and really made me respond um, to that piece of outreach. Uh, so I think there's a lot to be said about really being creative, thinking creatively when it comes to a lot of, you know, this prospecting content and basing a lot of that based on who you are as a person and keeping it very real. Uh, because it's, I know it's a cliche, right? But it's like they say, um, you're literally the only person that's unique. And that's going to be the most unique piece about you, whether that's a person or a brand. The fact is that there's only one of you, whether that's one of your company or one of you. So it makes sense to kind of base a lot of um, your content. And this is from the perspective of someone who receives um, a lot of it, but it makes a sense. It makes total sense to sort of base off a lot of it on who you are and keep it really honest um, and authentic. Really, just to go ahead also to, you know, your point around LinkedIn. We hear a lot of devs getting a lot of flack, you know, for sort of what they typically call, you know, connect and, you know, pitch and immediately do a pitch slap. Right. And I've received some of those as well. Someone connects with me and bam, the next minute I get, you know, an outreach for them. I might even be interested in their service, but I'm probably so cheesed off with that experience um, of how transactional that feels in some sense that I might not respond. I get why people would do it though, because everyone wants to meet their targets, right? They've been told reach accounts message them, get responses. What needs to change here? Is it sales leaders who need to change their mindset or, you know, is it sales reps who really need to kind of be mentored to do better? Yeah, great question, right? So when this happens, uh, more often than not, immediately I've seen people like blame the sales reps right away. I've also seen like some sales leaders openly shout out for sales reps who are actually doing this by name calling. Too, right? And those are like some uh, pretty bad stuff that are happening in the market, right? If you think with some level head, right, then the reality of this is the people who are doing this are not being coached enough or coached correctly or, or the, to think even ahead, just go ahead, look at the profile of the sales leader who's leading uh, them, right? And you will often see some people who are like very antiquated, who are out of from the market, right? Who are actually leading these people. And more often than not, like 10 years before, this would have worked. Like, who knows? It could have worked, right? Because like people were all out on sending emails and then like activity rate is directly proportional to your your demos or your your orders, right? And that was the kind of sales people were doing like a decade, two decades back, right? And people will people are still following it, right? Some people are still following, and that's because, mostly because the playbook is defined like that. If you see, if you look at that email, like I usually like look at those emails, look at those messages, right, in detail to understand why people are even doing this. And the very reason I can see is they are clearly written down. They are they are being given to them, right? And when you give something to them, it's it's more often than not like one person's brain that's acting, right? Uh, so what I would generally recommend sales leaders to do is trust your people, right? Get yourself really updated in the market, right? And three is give them a framework, not a pitch or a talk track, right? <laughs> so it's very easy to give a pitch or to give a talk track out, right? And like very honestly, you give a pitch or you give a talk track only to dumb people. Right? People who are extremely smart will figure it out, right? And make it a point to hire extremely smart people, right? So whenever I give uh, talk tracks, I do give talk tracks, I do give pitches, but everything will be framed as a framework. Nothing will be a hard and fast rule that you have to use the exact same words, exact same line, exact same punctuation and all of that, right? Because that's going to break their creativity, right? There is still a human connect to the profession that we are doing. That is why we still exist, right? Every other day, there are like tons of tools that just come up in the market that says that, hey, we are going to replace. And that is the, the fundamental, like people are now calling it more. I was watching a, a show that Nathan was posting yesterday and I could see like one of the founder uh, come in and tell that, hey, the future is going to be like customer led uh, buying, right? And sales people are going to go like, sales people are going to be eradicated out of the world. People have been saying this for three decades now and still we exist, right? The, the thing is we evolve with time, right? That is, that is my, my point, right? Right now it's all about creativity, right? Letting your people think clearly, right? And getting yourself updated with the trend and with the market as well is very, very important as a sales leader, right? Uh, just like how it's important for a developer, right? To understand the new technologies out there and getting themselves updated. It's also important for salespeople to understand and catch the latest trends that are happening in the market 
and getting themselves updated with. Great points there, Pradeep. And I'm just reminded of this segment from Friends. I don't know if you've watched this segment, um, this episode where Phoebe gets, you know, a cold calling job at, you know, an office. And she just has this script that she needs to go through. And, you know, she calls up someone and the poor guy, I think, has just lost his grandmother or, you know, he's in a bad shape. And she's stuck because she's like, I need to get through my script, right? Because that's literally what she has in front of her. So she doesn't yeah. know how to kind of get of that and just that entire experience of course tells her that she's maybe not the best person to be in sales or at least cold calling right because we know it takes heart um cold calling was also an art and it takes a lot of heart to do as well so yeah, i think great points around creating guardrails and really frameworks for your team to use and really encouraging them to kind of you know fill in the blanks and you know to kind of grow and make that better and i think really great point around kind of upskilling ourselves as sales leaders as well and keeping up to date with what's really happening in the great conversation pradeep i think this has been incredibly useful one last question for you as a sales leader right what will sort of maybe you know if this is the time of reset for you what do you think you want to kind of double down on or what will your priorities be as you kind of get into the new year great question so the, the core priority will be to understand, reflect on the mistakes that I did uh, personally, not connected to any business, right? But personally throughout the year, right? Like we will go wrong multiple times in multiple areas, right? And more often than not, it could be like as simple as earning your reps trust, right? And as complex as, okay, winning against your comp. And people can go wrong all the way, right? And, and the one thing that I would recommend for sales leaders is always be paranoid about the market, right? Because like market flips you over in, in no time, right? And that is something, uh, and, and always be grounded to reality as well. Uh, sometimes like when you get exceptional results, it's possible that you're, you're on a spike, right? And then like I see sales leaders like jumping all over, like all that. Instead, like it's, it's okay to be grounded to reality and then understand what will come and kill you tomorrow so that you can kill it right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Get it right, before so, it gets you. Exactly. Right. So, and that is what I will be uh, focusing on as well. Right. Reflect on my mistakes. Right. And then see what I can correct. Right. As I'm uh, going through the next year. Thanks so much, Pradeep. I think this has been an amazing conversation. This has also been one of our first on the Flipside podcast lives. And I'm sure there'll be many, many more interesting episodes. And um, of course, we have amazing plans as well for all of our audience in 2022. So yeah, we'll come back with some more amazing content when we see you back in 2022. Thanks so much, Pradeep. We've had a great conversation with you. Thank you, Kushal. And thanks to all the viewers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.